Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another video. In today's episode, I will be sharing with you another tip for building microservices in Go, specifically how to build REST APIs. So what is the agenda for this episode? We're going to be talking about REST APIs, the steps to build REST APIs, and I will give you a demo of this first part. So what is a REST API? Well, according to Red Hat, is an application programming interface that conforms to the constraints of REST architectural style and allows for interaction with RESTful web services. So what this means in practice is that the interaction between the clients and the servers are stateless. It uses resources, which for our example today and really for this series is the task, uh, the to-do application that happens to be defining a resource called tasks and the methods that we are going to be using for interacting with those tasks will be use will be http methods that usually map to CRUD operations so the create will be a post the get will be a read the update will be a put and the delete will be a delete and another important thing to mention about the RESTful APIs is that JSON nowadays is the de facto standard for transferring data. So what are the steps to build REST APIs in Go? We're going to be implementing the HTTP handlers, which is this episode, implementing tests, implementing custom times, implementing the open API or Swagger, and implementing the versioning. So what are we going to be using for implementing HTTP handlers? The package I like to use is Gorilla Mox. You can, you don't have to use this package. You can definitely use the standard library, but I do like using this one because it saves you a little bit of um, code when, in, when, when interacting with um, a, like a querying variables in the query arguments, or maybe you need to define some course configuration. Uh, or some login or maybe some middleware those kind of things so this one sort of like saves a little bit of code when doing that and it's sort of a more or less similar to the standard library i know there are some other options so feel free to check those out but i i like this one in particular as usual because this is the to-do application is use, still using domain driven design and I'm more explicitly calling now the way the Onion architecture is implemented or applied to this project uh, in particular. And now if you remember when we were discussing about the project layout in previous episodes is that we were talking about, hey, the internal package is the one that is defining all the domain types, all the logic. And there, then there is a service package that happens to define the application services, all those types. And then in the, another episode, we were talking about the repository pattern that happens to be in charge of the persistence layer. Well, that's the Onion architecture, basically. And with this new package that we're going to be calling REST, you will see all of that in action and all of that interacting with each other. So let's jump into the code so you can see what I'm talking about. One of the changes I made to the main package is that I remove all of those service calls and instead I replace them with this new type called task handler that as you may imagine already is actually the one defining or re registering all the routes or handlers, HTTP routes that happen to be used for the RESTful API. The other thing I want to mention is that this server and in general every time you're defining a, an http server you need to make sure to define timeouts because the standard library by default doesn't have timeouts or rather the timeout is no timeout so this is really important when deploying this to production now let's look at how is implemented the task handler the way i like doing this is that the task handler has methods for each one of the operations that we are going to be registering in the router so in this case there is a create that is mapped to a post there is a get that is mapped to a task there is a put that is mapped to an update the way this is uh, implemented as well is similar to what the services or the service type that we implemented previously now if you notice the way the task handler is implemented is receiving a service and the service is receiving a repository. So that's the whole idea. 
right so we're passing uh, or diff or configuring types using dependency injection which is again a uh, part of the repository pattern video that i was discussing previously and and that's how the onion architecture works the way it is in the context of go and you may or may not like is that because we're passing around types and we need to define concrete values or concrete types on each one of the layers we need to convert those types back and forth sadly in this version in this part in this part of the series i'm not doing that i'm using a standard or a standard library types or, or regular types like a string but I, if you notice this comment that i have here in the in one of the future videos i will be implementing custom types that happen to be applicable only to the http to the rest layer and will be converted over or typecasted to the domain types that are applicable again only to the internal package so for each one of the requests or rather methods that i have here uh, one of the things i like doing is i like defining concrete types for, for each one of the requests or responses that way depending on the logic that i have or the business requirements i can handle those requirements independently of each other again nothing stops you from perhaps defining a models package that happens to be in charge of you know interacting with the database interacting with the json response and all of those kind of things but again it gets really complicated really quickly if you don't separate if you don't create a, a clear boundary between the different packages so that's why although we are defining a uh, concrete types that may be sort of similar between each one of the packages and you may be thinking hey all of them sort of look the same maybe we can define one of them a task type for example that happens to be used for the repository that happens to be used for the json and also happens to be the domain type but trust me it gets ugly really quickly so if we look at the create and again this is equivalent to the http post you will notice that there is a request we are using json you are using the json decoder we're parsing we're decoding it and then after that if everything is fine we call the service the create method and if everything is fine we return a value back to the user and that's the same sort of uh, workflow with the other endpoints with the other methods like task it does like a find and with the update it's the it does the update method now how does this look in practice so if we run the service or server rather you will notice that there is this um, new service server running and i want to show you in the database let me refresh so do you, you don't think oops what the heck uh, so we are going to be pulling this value called hello nothing and we notice that is a uh, 20 so we are going to go calling curl x http uh, 0000 9234 tasks and the id that i put there and this one is literally calling hello nothing which is right here so if we want to update this one for example we're going to be using the http method put we're passing in some data which is going to be json and if you remember the way it's implemented right here the update is receiving a description and receiving an, a new is done field so an object so we do um, description change let's fix the json and then we do the same we will see that it's okay if we request the same type you will see that it says change and the same idea if we use post let's change this a little bit we put we do post we can call it new one we remove all of this because again this is the resource for creating new tasks we call this one and boom there is a task under using the df3 f whatever whatever if you go to the database we refresh we should see that one here new one 
F3, whatever, whatever. Really cool, right? And and really straightforward, honestly. The the the, the tricky part about the onion architecture, honestly, is is the the need or or this mentally mentally this mental uh, shift between hey should we use one type for all the layers or should we use one type for each one of the layers and obviously the the the, the pro is that everything is separated everything is you know there's a bound there is a boundary a boundary between each one of the packages but the pro the con is that we need to typecast between the the layers and whatnot, which could be annoying for sure. But again, trade-offs, right? And with all of that being said, um, thank you for watching. And again, this is the first episode of, like I said, five uh, for building REST APIs in Go. I will talk to you um, next time. Thank you for watching and, you know, keep it up. Never give up. See you.